I, my question is related to the doctrine of election. Okay. And so, um, uh, when you have the non-elect, you know, uh, per the doctrine of election, my understanding is mm -hmm. that they're not equipped to be able to accept the gospel to come to Christ. Um, however, we have we're taught also that um, anyone that that the Lord won't turn anyone away that will come to Him. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to you know to understand yeah. you know how do you how does that work? Oh, it's a great question, Brian. It's a common question. Um, you know, I grew up in circles where nobody talked about election. I pretended the word wasn't in the Bible. You know, you just sort of ignored it, like maybe if we don't talk about it, it'll go away. Well, it's in the Bible. It's there. You have to deal with it. And so what I would encourage you, I'm going to give you a short answer, but what I would encourage you and anyone else who is newer to our church and struggling with that issue is I did a six-part series in the early verses of Ephesians called Sovereign Selection. And in that series, I just walk through all of the issues like the ones you're raising. In fact, one message is devoted to questions about election. Well, what does that say about God's universal love for mankind, you know, et cetera. And so I would just encourage you to walk through that series. And I teach it as one who hasn't always believed in election. I grew up in a setting where I didn't. Like I said, we just ignored it. I just, I assumed it wasn't in the Bible. Well, it is. And so... I try to walk through that and explain it. So that would be the short version. But I would say this, when you look at election, we often think of it the wrong way. We think of it as something God does, that, that if God doesn't elect you, God did something to the non-elect. It's so important to remember that God does nothing to the non-elect. He simply passes them by. He intervenes in the case of the elect. So everybody gets justice. There's another helpful book on this, R.C. Sproul wrote, called, called Chosen by God, uh, which is excellent. But everybody gets justice. Nobody's treated unfairly. The illustration I use when I taught through Romans 9, and that's another place you can go to sort of walk through this process, uh, a number of messages on Romans 9. But what, what you have to understand, is it's as if our governor, Governor Abbott, went into death row down in Huntsville. And out of those men, all, men and women, all of whom deserve death, all of whom deserve the death penalty because of their crimes, they're getting justice. If the governor walks into that cell block and he identifies one person on whom to show mercy and, and to pardon, we don't say, oh, you know, the governor's being unfair. That's unfair. He should leave that guy alone and let him die too. Or he should rescue them all. That's the only way it's fair. That's, you don't believe that, and I don't believe that. But when it comes to God, that's how we begin to think, that somehow it's unfair of God to give justice to everyone who deserves justice and then for some to show grace and mercy and to pardon them. So it really comes down to a couple of issues. The key issue is on what basis does God choose? You know, once you deal with the fact, and by the way, Nobody else get up, all right? I think I'm, I got as many questions as I can get to here in the remaining time. Um, but in, when you look at, at election, the question is, on what basis does God choose? And one answer to that is God chooses based on what he sees in the person. You know, the, the standard answer is, the sort of Arminian answer is, God looks down the corridors of time, he sees those who are going to choose him, and he chooses them. Well, that sounds helpful. It sounds like it's going to get God out of a jam, you know, that it's not going to make him look unfair. But the truth is, um, the Scriptures won't allow that because there are clear statements contrary to that. For example, what does Jesus say to the cities he ministered in around Galilee? He says, woe to you, Bethsaida, Chorazin, all those cities. He says, because if the deeds that had been done in you had been done in Sodom and Gomorrah, they would have repented in sackcloth and ashes. Jesus says, I know that if what happened here, if I'd done that there, they would have repented. But guess what? God didn't give them anything but the justice they deserved. That was his decision. So it's unconditioned on anything in us. It's simply sovereign grace. And that is Romans 9. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. God says, I have a right to decide who I pardon, okay? But go listen to the Ephesians series, the first verse 4 
uh, verse 4 through 6, I deal with, it's six messages, I think, on sovereign selection. Chapter, which chapter, chapter 1 of chapter Ephesians. One. Okay. Yeah, just look for sovereign selection. Okay. And you can listen to the Romans 9 series too. 